What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Broke Girls Art School. Um, firstly, I want to give a huge thank you to all you guys. I just hit a thousand subscribers and it feels really nice. So thanks for supporting my channel and interacting with it. And this has been a ton of fun for me and I can't wait to do some more videos for you guys. Um, so today's video, I will be showing a step-by-step time-lapse tutorial of how I completed this painting. This is actually acrylic ink on birch wood. And it was a ton of fun. Definitely had a blast with this piece. I'm planning on hanging it at my tattoo station at work. Um, so yeah, as always, don't forget to subscribe and like and drop a comment if you have any questions for me. Um, I will be tagging all the supplies I use in the description box below. So don't forget to check those out if you wanna try out a similar project. Let's get started. So the first step I took for this painting was applying my stencil. Um, if you guys would like to see a more in-depth tutorial on how I stencil pretty much all of my art projects, I will tag a link in the description below. Um, after I stenciled, I took just some basic white acrylic paint and went over pretty much everything in the design that wasn't the background. Um, and I watered the paint down just a little bit so I would be able to see the pencil through the paint. Um, pretty much the reason that I did the white paint underneath is because I thought it would make the colors pop a lot more because it gives it just that little bit of extra contrast from the background of the wood. All right, and then afterwards, I let that paint dry for a little bit. And the next step I took was I grabbed my Pigma. These are like waterproof markers. They work great if you're gonna be doing watercolor stuff and you wanna line it out first because they don't smear at all. And uh, yeah, they're pretty consistent and I really like the felt tip on them as well. They come in like three different sizes. I'll tag the link for those um, below as well because I just got them off of Amazon. Can't beat that two day shipping, right? And I definitely recommend, like I try to keep the same strategies for tattooing as I do with like the rest of my art. So like I like having a thicker outline and then doing like finer lines for the details on the inside of the design. Um, I think it just makes the piece look a lot cleaner, especially when you have so many scales and like, you know, the, the belly of the snake as well. Like you want those lines to be really readable. All right, so now that that is dry, I'm gonna go in first painting my chrysanthemum. Um, I was fading from like a darker pink, like magenta kind of color into like a very baby pink. Super, super light tone. Um, I was using FW liquid acrylic ink and I really enjoyed this stuff. Um, it's a little bit thicker than watercolor, but still has a lot of mobility and it doesn't dry nearly as fast as acrylic does. And I ended up mixing some of my colors with um, a silver ink that I had bought because I wanted it to have a little bit of sparkle and shine to it when you see it in the sunlight. And the colors that I got for the ink were pretty basic. Um, definitely practice your color theory and you can mix pretty much any color you need to. Um, basically all the inks that I bought were the FW, but there was the one that you can see over to the left that's like an iridescent kind of aqua color. That one was um, Dr. Martin's, I believe is the name. Like Dr. P.H. Martin or something like that. I wanted to make sure that I had a smooth fade from the dark pink to the light pink on all the petals. Um, it's definitely very important to be consistent with you know, your color, how your colors are changing and if you're gonna be fading from different tones. So next I was going in with that pretty iridescent color that I bought from um, the Dr. P.H. Martins. 
This one was super shiny and it dried up really nice. Definitely a huge fan of this color. And I usually do the same thing with a lot of my paintings and tattoos. Like I'll take one color that I like a lot and then I'll darken it. Like I'll add some black to it and then I'll do another mixture with adding some white to it. So that way you can solve the same base color and then, you know, add shadows and highlights and stuff. Same thing with the belly of the snake. I was doing gold, so I had my regular, just plain gold color, and then I mixed gold and black for the darker shadows in the belly. And I'll be relining this, because I ended up just painting over that marker, so it did uh, like dull the you know harsh black lines. So I will be going back over the lines later to make them bold again. And I decided to do the inside of the chrysanthemums like the same kind of gradient that I did on the belly of the snake. I wanted to keep a pretty limited color palette with this just so it would pop a lot more. So here I'm going in with my mixture. I took that iridescent green and I mixed it with black to do the little shadows on the scales. Um, definitely takes a lot more time, but I feel like, you know, adding those little extra details just to give the scales or to make the scales look like they're, you know, kind of popping off a little bit makes it a little bit more three dimensional when there's those shadows in between. Just makes it look a little bit more like anatomically correct in my opinion, in my opinion. And now I'm also going in with that same shade of the black mixed with it, like that dark tone of green for the shadows where the snake's like coming out behind the flower and just adding a bit more contrast. to make the snake really pop off of the slab of wood, I thought painting the background black would, you know, just put it in the foreground that much more. I'm super happy I did that. I think it would have looked cool even if I left it on the, like the natural wood background, but I think it looked pretty sweet blacked out. And you might need to, to do a couple layers, especially if you're doing black after it dries. You want to make sure it's nice and solid. Alright, next for the leaves in the background, I kind of like them white. Um, so I decided just to add a little bit of like a silver glitter on top. Just so it wasn't blank, but still stood out from both the snake and the chrysanthemum. So I did the same thing, just a couple different gray tones, fading from a darker gray into the white. Yeah, definitely be patient to get those smooth blends because it's always worth it in the end. Um, and here I'm just going in and touching up some black spots to make sure the background's nice and solid. All right, and then I ended up going over that again with the marker, and this was the final product. Just wanted to thank you guys again for checking out my channel, and if you like my page and you want to support me, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to drop a comment if you have any questions or any future videos that you'd like to see. Have a good one!